Good morning to you all. Um, it's really lovely that you've joined us um, this morning for the Scottish BLC Autumn Regional Meeting. Um, as I've kind of said before in other online meetings, it's a real shame that we, we don't get to see each other face to face, but um, hopefully um, that time will come again. And also it offers the opportunity for those of you that struggle to travel, um, the opportunity to join in with the, the regional meeting. So um, it's really good to see you all. Um, so I'm going to um, kick off this morning's meeting with some BLC updates for you um, and just tell you what we've been up to recently. Then I'm going to be handing over, we've got two new fabulous sponsors of the BLC. We've got ClickView and Blackboard. Um, and I know that, um, I'm pretty sure that most of you are actually um, ClickView users, which is fantastic. So I'll be handing over to Jenny, Chris and Tammy from ClickView um, after my session. Then we'll um, hand over to Matt Beck, who's our new blended learning team leader as part of the team at the BLC. Um, some of you might already know Matt from some of the Microsoft community, but he's also a digital advanced quality practitioner at heart of Worcestershire College. So Matt's going to be sharing some um, experience from what we've learned about blended learning and structuring it and um, just give some tips and tricks on, on some of that. Then we'll be handing over to Gillian from Blackboard. Um, and after that, I'm sure those are two names that you, you recognise. We'll be handing over to Isam Babakan and Peter Kilcoyne from Transform Education. Um, and Isam will be giving um, plenty of takeaways as to how he's really embraced and used things like um, Microsoft Teams and how he's um, used things like Class Notebook, a bit around accessibility, etc. And then we'll have some cha uh, chance for some um, questions or just some conversation really and networking um, at the end there. So it is quite a packed um, schedule, but hopefully you feel that we're, we're squeezing enough in for you to all take away something from the morning. Um, as normal, this is a really open session, so please feel free to contribute and um, engage as much as you possibly can as we go through the day. Um, as I said, hopefully there will be time for questions after each um, of the sessions, but if not, there'll be plenty of time at the end. So without further ado, um, on to what we've been up to lately at the BLC then. Um, Obviously, we're really mindful that this pandemic has um, not only brought some challenges, but also brought plenty of opportunity as well to what we do with blended learning. Um, and many of you have been members of the Blended Learning Consortium for a, a long time now, so have already started with your blended learning journey. Um, but we also realise that people are, are desperate for more and more content to, to try and help out, um, you know, teaching and learning at this particular time. So what we've done is we've we've really had a look at the, the content and what we do. Um, and we've realized that in order to, you know, be really proud of the experience that our learners are getting, we also need to ensure that our content is regularly updated um, and presented, you know, in a current, um, and contemporary kind of fashion. So we've updated our learning object templates. Um, and as you'll have seen with the, the new logo and things like that, we're going for a much kind of fresher, more contemporary feel to the learning objects. Um, we're putting in as much interactivity as we possibly can. We've had some feedback from um, learners and staff as well that, um, it would be useful to be able to toggle the audio on and off. So we've included an audio toggle um, and that really helps with a, a number of different things. Learners can take, um, can absorb and digest the information at, in their own time rather than having to wait for the audio, but also it can help with accessibility and things like that. So um, initial feedback that we've received on that has been really, really positive, um, which I'm pleased to see. We've also um, 
you know look back at some of the legacy content that we've got and obviously things like public services are really heavy um, with legislation and things like that which obviously need to be current and accurate so um, we've refreshed all of our public services content so that's all of the level two stuff all of the level three stuff um, and we've put that into we packaged it in rise packages um, because again we've had some great feedback that um, learners really enjoy using the rise content so we've updated all of that um, public services stuff and we will now be focusing on other areas that we see need to be updated so there's, there's some bits of motor vehicle that we need to update and, and other areas so just to really kind of reassure you that we are constantly looking at the content and what we're providing and making sure that it's um, you know up to date and relevant and accurate for you so um, we're also when I say we're making the learning objects a bit more interactive we're trying to include a bit more gamification um, there's been some really good research around um, the the fact that learners all you know not only enjoy the gamification of, of learning objects but the retention of knowledge is also increased um, with that kind of interaction so we're included we've included a bit of that also in the maths GCSE content um, which is being published as we speak so you'll see some of that coming through we've had um, the go one teams integration all um, completed now so we've migrated all of our content across to go one so those of you that are very keen to um, have SCORM objects within their Microsoft Teams um, environments can now use all of the content within go one um, and we've enabled access for all of those colleges and liaised with go one as to what content you should be seeing in there so um, Esam's going to be talking a little bit about some of the feedback he's had about Go One, but um, anecdotally so far it's been very, very positive. Um, and then we've we've spoken to a lot of practitioners um, who are some of them are very much at the beginning of their blended learning journey, um, and they're really um, keen to get more guidance around the pedagogy of blended learning how they can support you know our learning objects with um, tutor input how they can make sure that learners are effectively tracked and engaged etc um, so Matt Beck who will be doing a session shortly for us this morning um, has really looked into what would be useful for practitioners and has started to create this blended learning starter pack so within the starter pack it will talk about um, simple things like you know how to access the content to begin with through a number of different um, platforms and then it will go through how to use the content effectively and how to support it and some suggested activities for um, asynchronous tasks um, synchronous uh, work so it, it's really there to be a bit of support and hopefully you feel that it will be useful for you to use um, a staff CPD as you're trying to embed further your, your blended learning provision um, so that should be coming out pretty soon I'm sure Matt will talk about it um, or touch on it in his session um, so the, the content releases that we're we're going through at the moment and you'll have seen so far um, you'll have had all of the tutorials content um, the GCSE maths content is now completed um, and GCSE English is coming out as well um, over the next few weeks uh, those I think will be really good because obviously they have such a broad reach so that's why we've really tried to prioritize um, those subject areas coming out first um, as they're more generic we've also got some initial teacher training level four and five content coming out and then um, essential digital skills which um, again lots of our members have come back to us and said 
we're really keen to use some of our content with the community work that we do. Um, so I think we've all noticed that there's a, a lot of work to be done around supporting learners with their digital skills. Um, they're fantastic using Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, etc. But when it comes to, you know, effectively collaborating with, um, you know, online documents and using things like Teams, etc., they need a bit more support. So hopefully that that package will be really useful and you can then use it again for, you know, adult learners, your community work, etc. Um, and also we've got some safeguarding content coming out as well. Um, so in addition to that, we're at Heart of Worcestershire College is involved in a project um, that requires over 185 hours of vocational demonstration videos to be created. And as I said earlier, we know that people are really, really keen to get more content to really enhance their blended learning provision and their online learning um, resource bank. So we're going to make all of these videos available to all of our BLC members as well. Um, the videos will be across a number of different subject areas, including catering, public services, um, engineering, construction, applied science, um, and a, a couple of others that have completely escaped me. Um, but just to kind of reassure you that, you know, lots of our learners say that they really enjoy learning through video. And I know ClickView will talk about the power of video um, within teaching and learning, but we're really keen to have this as another kind of um, form of media really for you to, to present your learning to, your students. So um, those will be made available um, as they're produced. They should be coming very shortly. Um, I think we've got some childcare and a bit of animal care stuff at the moment, but that's going to be followed quite quickly by applied science and some construction stuff. So just to make you aware of that being made available. Um, and again, we will put it into our BLC library on ClickView. So that's that's how it will be accessed. So um, we're really, really proud of the fact that we all of our content is produced through a democratic voting system. Um, we had a phenomenal response this year of um, 72 colleges voting for what content they needed to be produced this year. Um, and it was resounding actually in the response of lots of colleges said that they wanted more vocational um, practical areas um, developed in. So level two and level three electrical installation, um, we don't currently have any of, but this really surprised me actually that every, nearly everybody voted for those subject areas to be developed. Um, the same with nursing, we don't have anything currently for access to nursing. So that will be a fantastic subject area to to be developing in. And then we've got those broader subject areas that um, we know we have high numbers of learners um, completing. So more business, more engineering, um, more access to HE. And then um, the level two childcare and level three motor vehicle. At the moment, we um, we're just waiting to see the membership numbers because obviously the amount of um, content that we produce all depends on the amount of members that we have joined the consortium. Um, we're 99% sure that we'll get to the figure that means that we can we can produce the childcare and motor vehicle. But um, if I could ask you to kind of give your finance teams a nudge to get your membership in, um, that would be most appreciated um, so that we can make sure that we get that writing underway. So, um, Another plea really is that we really need some um, subject specialist writers who can help us out with these subject areas. So um, as you know, we pay for the content to be written 
um, and that can be we would pay your college but you can you know pay your staff accordingly as overtime or however you, you prefer to do it but this is a really good way of getting more money out of your membership um, so if you do have any subject specialists across your curric these curriculum areas that would like to do some writing then please do let Emma Williams know um, Emma's taken over from Kirsty Heritage as our project lead so she's just popped her email in the chat there um, please do get in touch with her we'd be delighted to have you on board as um, you know writers and contributors um, and again I know that Emma's gone out to consultancy for what topic areas should be covered within these subjects so again please do feedback um, because it's all down to you as to what we produce um, and develop. So those of you that use the uh, Moodle plugin, we've had feedback that um, you want a little bit more um, reporting and a slightly different tracking. Um, so we've had these features added to the, the plugin now, which include um, showing you kind of the breakdown by Moodle course, um, how many packages are on there, um, breakdown by subject area and accessibility document percentage, etc. cetera. Um, so all you need to do there for those of you that do use the Moodle plugin is um, just to update the plugin video on our how-to guides as to how to do that. So um, if you've got any questions at all with that, then please just drop us a note and we'd be more than happy to talk you through all of that. But hopefully you'll see that that's really enhanced the, the plugin. Um, and then finally, uh, again, I, I've spoken already about the fact that, um, you know, members are really requiring a little bit more support at the moment and um, we understand that it's a really a quite a challenging time still having gone through the initial first phase of the pandemic and a kind of emergency response we've now seen that this is it, it's going into a much longer period of time where a sustained blended or online provision is required um, so I just wanted to bring your attention to a couple of um, different things that could help you out. So the EdTech Demonstrator Schools and College Programme, um, we're actually part of this as heart, at heart of Worcestershire College. Um, and it's a great programme. It's free of charge, so you can apply um, to have some support by any of the, the EdTech Demonstrator Colleges. Um, and they can help you with anything like digital strategy, um, staff CPD, how to structure your blended learning and a number of different things and it's all free of charge so um, it's worth looking into that one. GISC have developed a, a really useful digital pedagogy toolkit um, which not only gives you lots of resources that you can use um, immediately and implement but also um, it signposts to some other useful resources so that's that's worth taking a look at. And then um, we're going to be hosting a, a webinar for Century. Um, and this is going to be focusing on how technology can really enhance your maths and English um, teaching and learning using you know, AI and all sorts of things like that. So they're going to have some guest speakers from um, a couple of different colleges that have used this really, really well and can kind of demonstrate the impact that using technology has had on their maths and English provision. So um, that's on Wednesday, the 25th of November um, from one till two. And Emma, will, oh, just there, where we go. Emma um, will, she already has dropped a note in the, the chat. If you want to join that webinar, please do um, just click on the link and it's free of charge and invite whoever you would like to that. Um, Emma, I've just seen a note about is the EdTech demo available in Scotland? As far as I'm aware, it is, yes. Um, but I can double, double check on that for you. But like I say, if you've got any questions around that, then um, we can, we'll do a bit of investigation there. I haven't been told otherwise. Um, and we'd always be more than delighted to help any of our colleagues in Scotland. So um, 
I'll get back to you on that one, but I'm pretty sure it is. So I've only gone two minutes over for my session, which is um, pretty good going, even if I do say so myself. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to colleagues from ClickView, who are going to um, host the first session for us. So over to you, Jenny, Chris, I don't know if you're ready to go. Yep. Give me two seconds and I'll cut this up. Great. Okay, can everyone see that clearly and hear me? All good, Chris. Okay, lovely. So look, as most of you all know, um, essentially you've got access to ClickView. And one of the things that we saw as a, as a big thing was to basically partner sponsor with the BLC. Um, why? Comes down to a few factors basically and how we align with our partnership. We work with 27 of the 30 colleges across Scotland. Um, part of that is one in three of colleges across the UK, but also four and a half thousand colleges, universities and schools worldwide. And I mentioned schools because we've started working with local authorities across Scotland, um, firstly in Edinburgh and also in Inverclyde. And there's a few other things happening with Education Scotland at the moment. But more importantly, as individuals and as an organisation, we passionately, passionately believe in creating great quality content and putting it in the hands of educators and also into learners. And one area that we've heard from BLC members and also other FE colleges across the UK is finding vocationally relevant and accurate content extremely time consuming and also difficult. And it was from this position and from talking with Amy that it was imperative for us to sponsor the BLC. And as an organisation, the BLC has taken its time to ask the sector what it needs. And as a partner, we're proud to be part of that journey today. So if effectively our sponsorship of the consortium is our means of formalising that commitment, but also contributing to the community of the BLC and its member colleges. Um, rather than giving you the hard sell on ClickView, we thought we'd run a bit of an activity today so that people understand where we're sort of coming from and how we can sort of assist. So I'm going to pass over to Jenny and Tammy in terms of our little workshop that we're all going to be a part of. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. So we wanted to take this um, as an opportunity, obviously, for you to get to know us a little bit better, but also from us to hear um, from you. So we just really wanted to utilise um, this time to try and understand a little bit more about what Good Blender's um, learning look like, looks like and some of the challenges that you have around that. So these are the three questions um, that we're going to look to address today as a group. So number one, what does perfect blended learning look like? Uh, number two, what are the challenges around using video for blended learning? And how do you share the message of blended learning across your college? So what is it that works and uh, doesn't work? So obviously we um, have a unique opportunity here where we're having these multiple sessions um, across the BLC. So we just really want to hear from the horse's mouth so we can learn uh, more about your strategies and the ways that we are able to support that. So if I just pop in here so our first question what does blended learning look like so you've got the option here you can either um, switch on your audio and contribute and um, through discussion I can capture some points or alternatively if you use the uh, text sign up here you can change the color um, and just chuck in um, some of your answers and I'll kind of read through them as and when they come in so what does perfect blended learning look like Just added that in the top there as well, Jenny. Um, oh, sorry, is it because I didn't click out? Sorry, did it? Oh, right. <laughs> sorry. Okay, yeah. No problem. <laughs> Was it twice? <laughs> so I'll just give people a few moments to respond. And this could be as an individual, what you think uh, in your mind perfect blended learning looks like, or from your college's point of view, student focused, uh, leader led, designed for the learner, interactive, fab. Best of face-to-face -face and online. Collaborative. Synchronous and asynchronous. Some meaningful and relevant combination of online materials. 
brilliant. And I suppose that's quite similar to some of the things we've been seeing this week, isn't it, Jenny? Um, the feedback. So it's good to get yes, it um, is. Sort of deep in deep in that as well. Got some transparent technology there as well, meaning and relevant, easy to access and accessible. So I'm just going to give you maybe 10 more seconds to just pop in anything else that you had to contribute there, and then we'll move along um, to the second question. Can, can Combination. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Transparent technology. Can someone expect, or who, whoever wrote on that, uh, do you mind expanding a little bit on, on that side of things? Sorry, I know it's hard to put someone on the spot and lived it <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm also just going to snapshot this so that we can record this as well. Perfect. Thanks, Tammy. So we've got just their traditional classroom based approach combined with online tools and materials slash videos. OK. Fab. Perfect. So if I just pop in the second question. So what are the challenges around using video for blended learning? So bandwidth, connection speed, finding the right information. Suitable device accessibility. Being up to date, subtitles, digital poverty, it being one sided, different learning styles, having to watch the whole thing, students with little data. Video length, that's popped up a few times as well. Mm. Um, with some of our things. Death by PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. OK, so knowing if learners access and watch all of it is a good one as well. Having so much to look through in the resources. OK, that's really good feedback. I think probably with regards to connection speed and kind of digital poverty and stuff, um, I know from having conversations with a number of colleges and in Scotland that that, has, that was definitely something that uh, was very difficult, especially at the beginning of lockdown, um, that some people you know, really found um, sort of stood out to, with their, their students. They hadn't realised how, you know, how few students had devices or had proper internet connections and so on uh, to be able to do work. So, yeah. I'll take a little snip of this one as well. Perfect. Thank you. So if we just then come on to the third question. Um, so how do you share the message of blended learning across your college? What works and doesn't work? So if you can just do the same, and again, feel free to jump in for, with some discussion points or just add it onto the whiteboard. But if you can clearly define what works and doesn't work, um, that would be really great for us. <laughs> there you go, pandemics work well. Excellent. All staff emails, yeah. Clear instructions. Sharing of best practice. Oh, we've got a couple on top of each other. Oh, there we go. Training in small curriculum teams, yeah.
uh, staff confidence with digital skills, has that been a, a big hurdle to overcome over the recent months? Yeah, yeah that would be challenging. Mm. Access to range of different resources. Lots of ideas of what works. And is there any particular medium of communication that works better than others? Okay, it's a large problem. We've got Ian. Hi, Ian. How are you? Um, so Ian's saying it's a large problem uh, with staff confidence. I think we've got small teams to support staff, but, um, but great staff and the team supporting them. You do. I've met lots of your digital learning team. They're all great. <laughs> Skype calls. Excellent. So I'll take another slip of this, uh, snip, I should say, sorry, um, and then we can uh, move on and I've put together some slides, just a little bit of feedback on what uh, others have said at, you know, earlier in the week and last week um, as well. So give me one moment. I'm just going to take a little snip of this so that I can record it. Perfect. And thank you everyone so much for your contributions. It's really useful for us. Um, to get this feedback. Did you get that snapshot, Tammy? If I, I stopped did. hearing. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, where am I now? So if we jump back to our slides, um, Chris, that would be fab. I must say, I've never had a group of Scottish people all be so quiet together. <laughs> <laughs> Usually all chatting over each other. Um, so yeah, as Jenny said, thank you so much for your contributions. Um, we put together a little bit of feedback on what's been, I'll share my camera, um, what's been sort of said earlier in the week. So if we move on to our first slide, um, Chris, from there. So um, what does Perfect Blended look like? So one of the things that really stood out to from lots of the feedback was, and we had a couple of people mention it today, um, lots of people when they were talking about what perfect blended learning looks like was very student focused. So motivating students to complete work independently. Someone said it earlier with, um, you know, being student led and, uh, um, you know, equal contribution from student and teachers. And I suppose one thing that I took from uh, um, this feedback was that when I personally, up until up until sort of these conferences, when I was personally thinking about blended learning, it was very much in my head uh, looking at the delivery methods that a teacher or a lecturer would use. So whether it's in person, whether it's game based, whether it's a video, etc. Um, but the responses, um, you know, as I said, are very student driven and. Uh, one thing that uh, um, we sort of added as a feature um, sort of more recently was the ability for students to create interactives and also introduced a student dashboard. And over the COVID period, we have become, um, you know, or we've tried to become and give students um, more of a student friendly platform as well, because it was very much lecturer led and the student experience wasn't um, as good. So we've been trying to grow that. And I think that uh, there's definitely merit in trying to do that and also possibly merit in us working with you guys as colleges on how we can help uh, get the word out for students to be using ClickView for their own learning and uh, creating interactives and doing different things. Um, with with uh, with ClickView in that regard, because it's clearly something that uh, yourselves as colleges are focusing on as well. Um, so that's great. There's lots of comments coming through. Um, so Chris is having a look at those. Thanks, Chris. Um, so I suppose if we move on to our next point of uh, um, what challenges are there around 
finding videos so, or using videos. So finding the right content has come up time and again, and we had that today. Length of content, um, internet connections, uh, time to source content, all you know comments that were brought up in today's sort of response. Um, and so I suppose one thing that uh, these conferences are really good at is sharing what content is out there what's being created by, you know, Amy spoke earlier about the different areas that the VLC are creating content. And I will talk shortly about some of the content that we've been making at ClickView and also licensing, et cetera. Um, so I suppose that's one thing um, to try and help, um, you know, share what's out there content wise. But I suppose I might pose another question to you all. Um, how is, individual colleges do you um do you share what content is there because i suppose my question comes from often i'll work with schools or colleges and people say oh yeah we've got click view we'll do general click view training or we'll yep we've told everyone that they've got click view um but with so much content and it's the same with the blc if new content's being released all the time how do you how does it work best or are there ways that we can help you spread the words to particular departments when there's new childcare videos come out or new catering content comes out? Maybe just any comments in the in the chat section would be would be helpful so that we know best how to help support um, yourselves. And I suppose that actually, if we move on to our next slide as well. Um, Chris, I can talk about that. Ian, uh, do you do subject specific newsletters? Yeah, we do. So we regularly send out to when we launch new content to um, our marketing team, um, share the different uh, videos that we've released or produced. However, I think if you've at some point unsubscribed to some of our marketing emails, you don't necessarily get those. So it's one thing that I do find often people say to me, oh, I didn't know that that had been released. Um, so if you don't get those, Ian, um, we can look at getting those um, you added to that list as well. Um, if we, if you think that those subject specific newsletters would be helpful. Um, and then David said, people who found the resources uh, useful in the past keep coming back. Brilliant. Um, oh, great, thanks, Ian. Um, and I can chat to you as well after this. Uh, so I suppose uh, looking at the next slide, how do we or how do you share the message of blended learning across your college? CPD days are working, staff days are working, um, and. Uh, um, sort of short training videos and so on. So, um, I mean, we are adding to our ClickView training channel all the time with different training videos. So if there are any videos as well that you, you know, are things that you think we could help or would be good for training for your organizations, we can definitely add more content to, to the training channels. And it might be worth us kind of touching base as well um, with each of you to see um, if we could provide some more short uh, short videos to meet your needs with that. One college who was on yesterday's session had actually created a web page um, of different links for um, for staff training, and she said that was working really well for them, which was great. Too. Um, and Neil, more staff are now using ClickView for sharing their own content, to, which drives wider engagement. Yes, and do you know what, Neil? I actually we'll be looking at some stats in a moment. Um, and so I had a, a quick look at, at different stats from colleges across Scotland, and I could see that you guys are really sharing loads of your own content. So there's obviously been lots of work gone into development there, um, which is great. So it might also be worth sort of, um, you know, sharing of any best practice or if there's any uh, content that uh, you want to share across the board. I don't know if people are familiar with the um, the ClickView training channel, the ClickView training channel, uh, sorry, not training channel, feature channels. Feature channels are where educators can host their own videos if they've been creating content. So um, 
city of Glasgow have got a feature channel on there. Uh, but if Glasgow Clyde want to be involved as well, we could get you guys a feature channel and um, you know, you can create your own your own channel and it's great for sharing across the network. Um, as well, I know I spoke to uh, Kevin uh, Skade, who I know you all know. Um, he was saying that they were um, potentially looking to do one for Ayrshire as well. So it would be great to get uh, more and more of you involved in that and sharing content. Um, so excellent. Thanks, Neil. Fab. So I suppose moving on to our next slide, um, looking at content production. So Amy spoke a little bit earlier about how um the BLC chooses content and obviously there's a vote process and stuff which is fantastic so you guys are all getting content that you're looking for I thought it might be worth talking a little bit about how we at Clickview uh, decide to either produce content or license content um because we do both so we work with over 100 producers to obtain content um and uh, we're proactive in searching for content providers but increasingly, because we're now in the industry um, more and more so, people are actually coming to us and offering, you know, asking if we want to license their content, which is great because we're getting more and more exposure to, uh, you know, to new content. But also, if there's content out there that your different departments and your teams are using and you would like to see us licensing, you know, send us details of these. I know some of your teams have been great in sharing people that have been producing videos that uh, they would like to use and have on ClickView, and then we can approach those content providers. So keep those requests coming along to us as well. Um, how we choose to generally do licensing or content creation is um, we look at the searches that are not returning results. So, so if there's continual searches for, um, let's say, uh, you know, catering and um, hospitality, you know, wine, beer, et cetera, then we'll choose to license some of those. And I mentioned those because we've just licensed some and I'll show you a little bit about those. Um, we also look at things that have got high searches, but they're bringing up older results. So looking at refreshing content to keep things new and current. Amy mentioned obviously legislation changes and we need to keep on top of that. So we do a lot of, uh, you know, work on that side of things, and then looking at gaps in the, in the libraries, as well. Uh, so that's a little bit about how we choose to commission um, content, and then obviously where we commission content, we are looking at who's already got great content that's out there and ready to go, um, looking to license that. But where there's gaps, uh, that's where we can start to go right. Okay. No one's got great content on this. People are searching for this. They're not getting in. Let's produce something. And we've got our in-house production teams for that. Um, so that's the looking at the content uh, production side of things. I thought this was quite interesting. This is a sample of three colleges from across Scotland um, of their click view usage. And interestingly, the orange section is the amount of click view content that's being used. So the slides will be a bit blurry, but I think we've got, I think it's 40 something, 44%, um, uh, 51% and 52% of the colleges in this example is click view content that's being used um, across the board, which is amazing. So it's clearly showing that obviously what we're producing and what we're releasing into the libraries is hitting the mark because it's the content that you guys are choosing to use when you're using click few videos um, and sharing. So well, well done. Um, and thank you as well for, um, for that side of things. Um, a little bit about some of the content. So for example, um, this month alone, if I look at content that has been released into ClickView, um, we licensed a whole series for the hospitality industry, which I just uh, spoke about. But there was a wine, different wine series on wine varieties, um, you know, the production process of making wine. There's one on coffee, um, you know, uh, from barista training, uh, sort of the coffee industry, etc. There's another one on beer brewing. Um, and then a 
um, got another series that was uh, released this month, which is more on the STEM side of things for um, science, uh, electricity, um, and and looking at that side of things. So lots of different content, and that's just this month alone. So I think in total that was about a um, hundred videos that were licensed that were released, um, as well as our content um, production side of things. So. Um, one of our hits this month has been digital literacy, ethical computing, and uh, looking at uh, um, the different uh, ways that our data is managed and um, you know how companies use that, etc. And I think it's quite actually timely because um, what was the series or, or the show on Netflix that everyone's talking about, Chris? We watched it the other day. Please remind me. Social dilemma. Thank you. The social dilemma. Um, so it works in well, and it's obviously um, you know a popular topic that's being spoken about with uh, with young uh, or with students. Sorry, I should say young people, students. Um, and it's the kind of information that, uh, no matter what subject you're studying, is of interest. Um, you know, or, or has relevance uh, to all those uh, different groups. Um, Sorry, excuse me one moment. Um, and then finally, I just sort of wanted to move on and share a little bit with you about usage or views of videos because um, someone mentioned it earlier in this session and uh, um, someone wrote it, uh, pandemic's a good way to get people involved with, uh, with digital learning. So just from the stats that we can see here, this is the views on ClickView. So we had 15 million views on ClickView um, this uh, this year, which is a massive increase. Um, we've also had a huge uptake. If you see on the the right hand side, the um, the number of uh, um, the number of unique users. To, uh, 1.2 million different unique users this year um, using ClickView. So more and more people are engaging. Uh, you'll have found that across your colleges, and uh, um, you know it's great to see. So you've obviously everyone has had to make a massive jump forward in their digital journey. Um, so we just need to kind of try and keep the momentum going as well for people. And I know everyone does have a little bit of digital fatigue. Um, but uh, they've all made such good, great progress that let's keep everything, you know, try and help support. You know, we're here to help support you guys um, in keeping that going where people have made great um, contributions and, you know, great improvements. And then I suppose my final slide um, is uh, looking at uh, the global views of ClickView. And uh, I mean, this just shows the massive peak that we've had going through March, May. I mean, generally this year there was an increase um, in sort of in video views, and you actually don't really see the um, the difference um, or how how much of an increase there was for the you know July to January because there was such a massive peak in COVID. It doesn't really do it justice the increase but yeah you can see um sort of the the uptake there so i just thought that might be interesting to share with everyone um so finally before um i finish up just letting you know that we are running a webinar on our teaching online masterclass you already have access to the teaching online masterclass videos but just to draw your attention to them these also sit in the feature channel the Teaching Online Masterclass is a series of over 50 short CPD videos that you can use um, across the college um, or individuals can use them for their own CPD. Um, they look at uh, teaching online, um, very pedagogy focused on different learning styles, etc. And we worked with a whole number of different organisations and educators from across the, uh, the country and the globe. Uh, to create the series. So, um, yeah, definitely check them out. Ah, um, oh, fab, Joe, you're using them. That's brilliant. Um, 
and so yeah we are running a webinar that's open to anyone so you can share it across the college so that we can help spread the word as well for you um that they're that they're available and i will share a link after this um where people can register uh, so that's all i hope have i run over time um, yes i hope oh sorry yeah <laughs> i'm sorry amy i'll hand back no, you, to you you've done a great job tammy because i was i ran over so well done you for clawing it back as you did um but thank you so much um to the team at clickview i think we'll all agree that it's such a fantastic platform to use um and the content is just you know brilliant for especially for what we need um, at our institution and I'm sure that's echoed across all of our members that are here this morning. Um, it's really exciting as well to hear about um, more staff using um, ClickView for their own content and things like that which I think um, I know that Joe's doing some fantastic work at City of Glasgow College as well around developing more video and I really do believe that this is going to be a medium that just grows and grows and um, evolves into something really useful. So um, we're delighted to have ClickView as, as sponsors. So thank you for that, guys. Um, so without me chentering on too much, I'm going to quickly hand over to Matt Beck, who's our blended learning team leader. He's going to share some um, kind of strategy around blended learning and structuring it. So over to you, Matt. Thanks, Amy. Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for your time. I um, hope you're all doing OK. And um, again, thanks again for attending the uh, uh, conference today. Really, really value your uh, attendance. So, yeah, today, uh, a little bit about me quickly. Um, so I've worked for the college uh, for about seven to eight years um, and I've just recently joined the fantastic BLC uh, Blended Learning Consulting team, which I'm really, really happy about and, and working with Amy and, and, and the brilliant team and, um, in, in, you know, supporting you and, and providing some really high quality resources. So really happy about that. Um, my other role is an AQP, which is an advanced quality practitioner for digital skills across the college. So I've been doing that for a good couple of years. Um, as you can probably imagine, that's really taken off this academic year um, with with COVID and, 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 and kind of the difficulties around that with remote and, and, and blended kind of styles of learning. So um, today, I'm just going to share with you quite a few um, different ways of how you can structure your, your online and your blended learning, but also some kind of tips and some things that I've picked up on my travels and, and working with other colleges and, and schools across uh, England mostly. But um, again, you know, um, just trying to kind of bring those things together to, to offer some support, really. So first of all, um, just want to kind of break down and start kind of uh, by, you know, what kind of things you're going to need. And you really are going to need a, a kind of very comprehensive uh, LMS or VLE. Now, why I say that is because you want to make it sure, make sure that your staff and your students are really kind of understanding of how that works and, and, and how it's kind of, share between both parties some of these kind of um you know platforms can be quite confusing and and, and, and students may find it difficult to engage and and and, and have the fear to engage in these, these new ways of, of working so it's really important that you offer that kind of support and and that training for staff and students around what how how you can use these things Again, kind of going, stripping it back into your kind of uh, into your class, kind of and in, in, your, in your course settings, is about kind of defining a, a, you know a, a course outline, how it's going to look, how it's going to play out, and how you're going to kind of share different parts and, and resources and and, and 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 techniques across that. Really to communicate that to, and support your learners around that, because again, they'll know have some understanding of um, how they can buy into that and how they can engage in that. Um, some clear learning objectives again you know thinking about your pedagogy and how you're going to in, you know in, in involve your students in that in that designed learning trying to kind of communicate that with each task and assignment or mock exam or or however your courses are laid out but giving them the opportunity to kind of see that prior to when they're going to be completing the learning is a really good kind of quick tip to help them settle and, and know what they're about to be doing Again, going back to communication, try to keep that regular and try to keep that supportive 
um, some of the sessions that we've covered over um, the last regional meetings across um, the last few weeks, people have been saying about, you know, making sure that that communication is available for students, but making sure that the respect for ourselves and we're not replying at the early hours and, and giving that kind of communication and that support between the office hours is, is really important. Again, really, you know, making sure that your students are, are, are welcome to communicate with to with you about any any problems or any issues that, that they might be finding. Set any guidelines and your expectations. Um, really, really important to kind of offer that reassurance um, and, you know, putting those good solid expect expectations will help your students follow the path that they're supposed to be taking. Um, again, you know, with that links to that communication that objectives. And please don't forget, you know, about your kind of pedagogy and your teaching points. People don't. Um, what I've learned from especially my AQP role is that, st that staff have just flooded the kind of LMS and the VLEs or, or whatever platform they're using with tons of resources and tons of um, digital kind of um, things used and forgetting about the actual bare bones teaching and, and trying to kind of close that loop and link everything together just so you can kind of identify um, any knowledge gaps or, or the retention that students might need. So what I've kind of done is I've kind of broken this down into some kind of five steps to try and think about when you're, um, you know, designing your um, blended learning. And again, it links to some of the stuff on the slides before, but interesting your topic is really important and, and doing that in, in plenty of time so that students can kind of get their head around what they need to be logging into, what they need to be kind of accessing and, 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 and downloading and all that kind of stuff. And, and ultimately what they're about to learn. I think that's a really good kind of way of, of engaging your students uh, and, 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 you know, getting that kind of routine for them to be able to follow. Again, going back to the objectives, it give, giving the learner the objectives and, and the information to be able to succeed is really key to kind of um, engaging them and, and kind of, again, building that routine with them that they, they kind of know where they're going to be um, learning and what points they need to be doing that, that you know, self-guided or, or a little bit of research. Linking it all to your kind of teaching points and your expectations as well is really important. Um, and just kind of giving your students or, or your staff the information um, that they need. Then we're going to go on to some kind of learning, independent learning tasks. So thinking about the theory, where are you going to be putting that in? How are students going to be doing that? Are they doing it remotely? Are they going to be having to go off and do their own kind of parts of research? Or are you going to provide them with the resources that they need to be able to do that? Um, again, thinking about how um, you can incorporate those group tasks just because we're doing things online and, and, and you know, sometimes that can be quite isolated. Trying to put those group and collaborative tasks into your online content or, or your online courses is really important to help develop that um, social interaction because a lot of students might be finding it tough from home, especially if they're independent and they, they you know, they live on their own and stuff like that. So really important to try and bring those, uh, those activities in. Um, providing extension tasks as well. I think you're, you're going to have a mix of team in most groups. You know, you're going to have your stronger and, and, and your potentially weaker learners on different subjects that will change all the way through. So trying to provide those extra bits to, to stretch learners or also give people the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the subject in their own time. Um, again, really important to not, to not forget about the traditional methods and the kind of core skills like your reading, your writing. Um, and you're speaking, listening, those kind of things and, and your kind of British values and all your embedded kind of themes that that you can kind of bring in to a regular traditional classroom. So try to think about how you're going to be bringing those into a, a kind of online or blended setup as well. Then you kind of go on to your live lessons. So again, thinking about how you're going to be interacting with your students and try to break it down into segments so it's going to be more engaging and more easier for your students to follow. So again, some of the some of the mistakes or some of the, 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 uh, the situations that I've helped people with is that when they're de delivering their online lessons, you really need to try and um, not just flood the, the kind of time with, with just presenting for an hour and, 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 and expecting your students to be engaged for that full hour. Try to break it up a little bit in regards to how you summon your activities around your theory or your learning or your teaching. 
and then the plenary always kind of go back to your learning objectives try to identify and question and, and use assessment techniques that that teachers are, are brilliant at doing to try and find those knowledge gaps uh, and again trying to close the loop on the session or or pick up on points that that maybe maybe need to be revisited by um, certain people okay um, I wanted to kind of talk about some of the things that we and, and I, I have always recommended people to be using especially for my AQP role and again you know the blended learning consortium resources I, I know I'm biased but they are fantastic to support that blended approach um, again try not to think about using that solely and, and, and using different kind of activities and, and assessment techniques around that is, is really good and again things like flipgrid uh, and wakelet are really really engaging kind of applications that can be used for lots of different reasons so flipgrid again for starter and, and, and finished activities feedback about a lesson feedback about a particular topic wakelet's a really good collaboration tool where you could get students all together working on a particular theme or a particular project uh, and again click view you know some of the fantastic resources that those guys produce and provide they really make it easy for you to be able to give some visual um, resource into your kind of um into your blended or your remote approaches um we are how how college we're at microsoft showcase college so we are very much using uh, all of the 365 applications that we are available to us and and I think we'd be pretty lost actually without some of the fantastic tools that they're providing and, 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 and updating regularly at the moment. Um, Teams is our main platform for uh, lesson delivery. Uh, we're looking at kind of um, exploring different options about how we can incorporate Moodle into that. And also uh, there's a fantastic kind of um, application at the moment called Go One, where you can bring all of your blended learning resources into um, your uh, setups. OneNote and OneNote Class Notebook is a fantastic tool to be able to work with your students collaboratively and remotely. So again, you know, note taking and, and using kind of different forms of assessment is a fantastic there. Again, another really fantastic assessment tool, uh, formative or summative or, or, or however you want to assess at regular points, forms is fantastic. And, it, you know, using things like OneDrive and your Google Drive and stuff like that to be able to share and collaborate with with students on the same uh, piece of work is really really good to be able to keep it digital and keep it kind of remote and, and and again working on the same document in that collaborative way is going to help with building staff but also students you know employability skills and, and, and skills that they're going to be able to take into you know further education or, or, or whatever situation it is um so i just wanted to kind of wrap up a little bit really about kind of things to take away um, and again some of the stuff that I've kind of worked with uh, members of staff and, and, and about how we design a more online and a more kind of successful online and blended learning approach is try to put yourself in your learner's shoes um, I think that you know as from a teacher experience as well I think people tend to just Put these resources out there and, and and kind of hope for the best and not try to think about how the learner is going to access it and i think it's really important that we try to take a step back and think about how um what uh you know and how your students are going to be looking at it from their point of view um don't forget the basics and, and you know just because you're using technology it doesn't mean that you can't in, encourage students to you know still develop and build on their social skills that might be online or it might not be but trying to think about your reading, your writing, your listening, your social skills, really important to keep um, encouraging and working with that because I think, you know, I know that I'm sure a few people will probably agree that, you know, working from home or working a little bit more on, on devices and stuff, it, it does get a little bit kind of, um, you do get a bit of fatigue, which I know that Jenny mentioned in her click for you um, presentation before. So students will still be feeling that just as much as what we will be so yeah try to kind of mix it up a bit supporting your students and don't always assume that they know exactly what they're doing i think i think amy touched on it a little bit you know about how the students know how to use you know uh instagram facebook all those kind of social media platforms but you know teams and, and kind of google classroom and those kind of things they probably don't always know and, and, and what to do so offer some support offer some some training some resources for them to be able to refer to 
and obviously linking back to your communication be available if students are finding it difficult and and try to support them so they can they can take it upon themselves to to, to you know learn a bit better try to keep it consistent as well try not to switch it up all the time i think you know if you've got a good baseline and a good kind of understanding about how how your course is going to be running what applications or what technology you're going to be using try not to flood the market with 100 different assessment tools yes switch it up a little bit so it doesn't get stale but give your students and give your members of staff the opportunity to, to understand and work with those tools to be able to um to use them as, as best that they can um so you know it doesn't really kind of confuse because i think that's what some people have, have, have referred to to me um and that's that's it so um really it, i wanted to kind of give you a bit of an overview about what sort of stuff that i've been supporting with and experienced across uh, this academic year um as amy said you know we're, we're looking at um uh, creating a, a blended learning startup pack to try and cover all of this and more and we're aiming this at, at different people so from management to, to, to teaching staff to students there's going to be something hopefully away for everybody but you know working with you guys is, is, is really privileged to be able to kind of have some some feedback about what you feel is, is really good to include and um, and what kind of different scenarios you've been using is, is really great to help us design that so it's it's accessible and and, and it can inc be inclusive for all so i'll put my email in the chat here. so yeah if you do have any ideas or any any kind of uh, thoughts or, or or problems that you found that that, that you would be worth sharing them i really appreciate your your uh, contact on that but yeah that's me so thank you very much for your time um and yeah over to me thanks very much matt that was brilliant um and it's generated some really useful and um, fantastic conversation in the chat, actually, as we've been going along. So um, I'm really pleased. Thanks, Joe, for sharing that about um, the collaboration across the sector with the YouTube playlists. Um, I'd urge everyone to have a look at that. I, I had a look at it um, a short while ago, and it's, it's really fantastic. And I think the only way that we're going to get through all of this is by more collaboration. So um, that's one of the things I think is fantastic about the Scottish colleges in particular. You're so open and willing to share best practice, which is really refreshing and fantastic to see. Um, Emma's just popped a note asking about um, facilitating online proctoring for closed book assessments. So again, those of you that have experience of this, I know Joe's popped a note in there about his experience. Please feel free to share in the chat and um, discuss what you use. Um, and then again, yep, David, I agree. I love Wakelet. I use it for all sorts of things um, and it, it's so flexible. So it's really good that we have got these tools um, available to us that we can use and mix up and again sharing ideas about how they're used is really useful for all of us to to hear more about so um i've just noticed that jillian's online so i'm going to hand over to um jillian fielding from blackboard now um blackboard uh, the second of our sponsors um who's going to talk you through um what they've been up to and some great resources that have, are available there to all so over to you jillian good morning everyone uh thank you very much amy and matt's there um so yeah i'm just going to talk through some use cases uh, and a couple of resources that uh, blackboard have got available at the moment so uh, i'm Gillian feeling i'm what's called a client experience manager so i look after clients generally once they've bought the products uh, to make sure they're getting good use out of them i'm on the call today with my colleague helen helen would you like to introduce yourself Morning everyone, um, my name is Helen, I'm one of the account associates here at Blackboard. So I look after um, some of our new clients and some of our existing clients. So I'll be assisting Gillian in the chat today. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. So if you've got any questions, um, uh, feel free to raise your hand. There's not many of us on the call. Um, so we can take questions throughout or we can uh, take them through the chat as well. Um, so I want to talk about, um, and it's great to see uh, some 
uh, Ian and David on the call that I know from uh, North East Scotland College uh, who are Blackboard customers and new faces as well Joe Wilson that name is Isabella I'm sure we've met anyway um, Glasgow maybe um, um, perhaps we could actually just start off by putting in the chat as well what uh, what VLE you are using at your institution so I can you know make sure that I'm talking to the audience so if you could just pop in the chat which VLE you're using currently and uh, yeah beautiful yep Great. So some of the products at Blackboard, uh, we're not just a, a one product company. We have several products and several services um, that work for both. I say several, there's lots uh, of services that work for Moodle and our own products and Canvas as well. And this first use case that I'm going to talk about is Ally is um, works in all the products that you're using, all the VLEs that you're uh, using at your institutions just take a, a quick question um, have you heard of Blackboard Ally just to see how many people have heard of it uh, so if I just start that poll oh you're ahead of me you're in the chat <laughs> okay uh, seven have responded there's just three people to respond they may be uh, yeah uh, just one person to respond. I'll call out three, two, one, and go down. So three, two, one. Okay. Uh, right. So just one participant has not responded, but everybody else has heard of Ally. So I will uh, talk about what it is then, because uh, you're all responding, saying you know what it is, which is great. Um, so uh, City College Norwich. For Ally uh, this year and uh, they've got some early feedback from the training that uh, they've run at their institution with the staff uh, why haven't I known about this before I absolutely love it why haven't I heard about it before it should be compulsory across the college um, they did a, a poll within their VLE of students to ask them um, if they'd heard of it what they thought of it if they were using it so some hadn't come across it yet, but um, predetermined answer, a lot of them ticked it was brilliant. They haven't got detailed feedback yet from the students, but I'm, sure it, I'm confident it will be positive because that's what we see all our other customers say about it and that it makes a big difference to students. Um, and this is, uh, they did. Uh, there uh, at Norwich they didn't do a big massive rollout with lots of promotion around it um, they switched it on they did some staff training and they did some comms um, sometimes we get you know a full project behind uh, these products to roll them out and encourage adoption but I would say Norwich was sort of in the middle it wasn't a big project but they did some comms around it and did some staff training and this early adopter Angelique uh, Anderson um, really ran with it and uh, pushed it with her students she really liked it. Um, and what she found is that management are now asking more about it because the curiosity and, and the positivity that her students and colleagues have found about it that senior management wanted to know more about it they were now more engaged with it because of her enthusiasm for it and what she said herself is that she's saving some time that students benefit because they have the options and it benefits all students it's not just those with learning disabilities and where we see um, uh, institutions whether colleges or universities have got ally where they've had it a while and they've been rolling it out we're starting to see a culture to change in thinking it's not just around accessibility people are seeing the benefits for all learners and then they're seeing how inclusion makes a really big difference and how important that is so it's been very positive and as Ian says in the chat a massive increase in the use of ebook formats this year compared to last year um, that's interesting Ian and good to see uh, because obviously that's a much more digital format uh, it's transportable is the EPUB version people can use all the functionality within it as well that's great to see I must talk to you more about it 
10 times increase that's huge <laughs> so that's a really good example oh and david's put one too his son's using the audio to listen and read documents at the same time do you know that's a really good example i used to do that when i was studying and i'm working full time studying at night reading journal articles my concentration is not great at the best of times, but at the end of a working day, it is definitely challenged. And what I used to do exactly what David's son was doing, and I found that it reduced the time it took to read a journal article by two thirds because I stayed focused on it. If I listened to it and read it, it's a really good example, David. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And what I'm going to do here is at the start of COVID, um, Blackboard released this Blackboard Ally Transformer. And I'll, uh, Nescol, I'll be really keen to hear if you've been using it there. Um, we, 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 I'm going to show you what this is. It's a very small part of Ally that does the file transformation. And this is publicly available. So you can use this yourselves. We released it primarily to help students um, through COVID. Um, staff can use it as well. I mean, the language is, is aimed at students, but you know, it's publicly available. You know, your, your mum can use it or your brother or your sister, but that's who we aim it at. And it means that people can transform um, a file from the original format, whether it's a PDF, a Word document, or an HTL document, into some of those alternative formats so can somebody just confirm that you're seeing this in my ear because i've not got my second machine on today we can see you Jillian. thank you very much helen <clears throat> so i'm just going to upload a word document that i have in my tidied uh, folder um check it's not a robot like if you do it for the first time you just put where you're from in you know which institution transform my file and then it will convert it into uh, a number of alternative formats um, for those david and ian it doesn't do the translated version it just does the others um, but you can see here epub you can, it'll transfer uh, trans Fur it into that, transform it into that, sorry, HTML versions. So students can get these files. Now, even though uh, whether you've got Ally or not, even if you have Ally, this is really useful because it sits outside the VLE. Um, and we found that the biggest user across the world to use this is a, uh, a university that already has Ally. And they're saying, um, people that are using it are saying that, you know, say maybe library staff who don't have a VLA environment or students certainly are using it to transform files that they're finding on the internet or elsewhere so that their lecturer isn't posting but they're finding independently. Um, David, your son, <laughs> could use it without going into a VLA environment. Uh, marketing departments have used it to um, transform some of their files, you know, to make them more accessible uh, and just put those alternative formats online for people then to download. So that's available. Uh, we're not sure when it will uh, end being available because we did it for the pandemic and we've extended it twice. Um, that's still being discussed and an ongoing discussion but it's there now for anybody to use free of charge you just download your documents and then there it is in an alternative format for you to use now i won't go into the benefits of all those because i've only got another 10 minutes left so it's definitely worth having a play and i'm sure uh, helen will post the link in the chat if she hasn't already so i'm just going to ask a quick question on that to see whether that's something you think you or would find useful to use and I'm going to use the collaborate feedback tool for that so um, I'm going to ask you the question will you use the ally transformer <laughs> yeah thanks Joe um, you can reply using the uh, feedback tool which is in collaborate which is here um, where the, the head and shoulders is. If you click on that button, you will open the feedback panel and then you can choose agree or disagree. Will you use the feedback, uh, sorry, the Ally Transformer? And I can see that the majority 
uh, thought that was useful. So that's good. That helps me know that I'm tailoring this presentation to so something that's useful to you. Now, next case that I wanted to talk about uh, is, yeah, it is a very similar tool. There are differences uh, with um, census, but it is a similar tool. But I won't go into the differences now, but we're happy to talk to you about that if you're interested. Um, so this use case is from Brunel University. And I know that's a university and we ummed and ahed about including it, but we decided to because uh, for two reasons, because it's topical and also because you do a lot of care courses within further education as well. So uh, what Brunel University uh, were involved with was training up um, health care professionals, nurses, doctors uh, who were uh, called in to help train staff, nurses and doctors in ICU specialist work for the Nightingale Hospitals. So they set the big one up in London. They needed to have many more ICU trained professionals. Um, so what they did is some of the staff that had retired, some of the staff that were off work with chronic health um, conditions or on maternity leave, all pitched in to help train up ICU professional, more ICU professionals for the Nightingale in London. And um, it, it was Brunel, um, a healthcare company called Analytics 33N and Blackboard. And we all worked together to put a course together in distance learning, because obviously it had to be done through distance learning because of the um, COVID. Um, and they put a course together in Learn Ultra, Collaborate, that we're using today. Learn Ultra is our VLE, Collaborate, and the Training and Development Manager, which is a, um, an extra tool that we do that allows for self-registration. So it's a bit like your prospectus um, or your online course catalogues. Uh, and people can look at the courses, sign up, and if necessary, pay and enroll, and then get immediate access to the courses. Um, in this case, obviously, it was free and uh, they got a certificate at the end of it. So we trained up between us a thousand staff within a month in those critical care skills. And the feedback on the tools that they used was that it was fantastic. And the course that they used was that it really helped them boost confidence for caring for those critically ill people. And on the system, you know, it was a whole new system that they hadn't used before. Um, let me clarify that Learn Ultra um, is our new VLE. We have an older one, solid one, still being used called Learn 9.1 or Learn Original, but we have this new one called Learn Ultra. So although um, Brunel were using Learn 9.1, they had to almost get used to it, a, a new VLE, uh, because they were using this new version. And uh, it was a whole new system for them that they don't currently run any courses on it, but it was very positive feedback. So things can be done. And this is this is what the uh, the sort of course catalogue looked like for them. It was a one day course. So the nurses would go in and pick which day they were going to do the training course from the course catalogue, register for it. Um, they'd go into it, click enroll now. That was it. They were registered once they'd filled in the basic details. Then they got access to the course, which is shown here on the right hand side. This is the Learn Ultra environment. Um, and then they would, uh, it's a one day course. They'd have check in points to do at the start of the day, the introductions. They'd have some live teaching as well as the activities um, that they would do by themselves. Part, and they'd have this live session part way through, so it's interspersed through the day uh, with those check-in points, and it worked really well. <clears throat> and then at the end of it, end of the day, they just went back and got the certificate of completion. Um, and we have another example from Bangor University, again a university, but again it's infection prevention. So I know very popular with your. Um, <laughs> care courses and probably everybody else nowadays as well. So this is um, from one of their lecturers in healthcare. And what she wanted to do was she wanted to improve recruitment 
in their undergraduate and graduate degrees and she wanted to try a new learning environment she's quite a digital enthusiast like many of you so she set up a, a, a MOOC one of these open online free courses on infection prevention and she what, did it in our new learn ultra in course sites that I'm going to show you in a minute which is a free platform for people to try um, our products um, you can have up to 10 courses that are free of charge so if you any of you you know are interested in teaching part-time uh, outside your college um, then you can use and try this platform to do it in a learning environment. Um, she had 10 units. She took a mobile first approach. She took very much an active learning approach. Um, so there were lots of discussions and reflections and continuous engagement. Um, she got great student feedback. Uh, it was bilingual in Wales. They have to have Welsh available for students to study in. She found it was more user friendly uh, and she said that everything just worked and it was very easily imported from her old course. Uh, which was in 9.1 but equally works well in Moodle and Canvas and then it was very easily imported and she's actually up for a Nursing Times Award tomorrow um, so we're hoping, wishing her all the luck uh, tomorrow. So I just want to jump back and show you uh, screen share again should be good to show you what the free course size looks course sites looks like um, so I've logged in uh, you get 10 courses, each one of these rows are a course. Uh, you can have it in a tile view, so it looks much more attractive and much more visual, which is generally more appealing to students. You can filter on different courses, so you can just see the open courses. Um, once you get into a course, you've got easy access to other tools, like, we'll just get rid of that, uh, just a notification, uh, like Collaborate, if you want to jump on and do a live session, it's just there into the course room that's built in. Um, the uh, course content, as you'd expect, is here. Objectives and overviews, welcome forum, uh, and so on. Um, and you can see Ally is built into this product as well. So I'll show you where. Um, I can't see it on that page. That's good on the discussion. And I'm not quite sure why. But I'm going to come back out to that. Um, Let's go to the course objectives. Here we go. So put the top there on this page. So students can see that once they know what the Ally A is, or if they just click it and explore it, then this is it built within the LMS. They can just download uh, that. It's not a document in this case, it's the uh, WYSIWYG text on the page and they can download it in those alternative formats just by clicking the download button. So if they want to listen to that, they can do. Um, I'm conscious it's 11.30, so um, I'm going to stop sharing, but that course sites is there available for anybody to use free of charge. Um, as I said, up to 10 courses um, and you just go to the site and register and which is a very straightforward process just basically name and email address and then you've got access to that to use it for yourself and the last slide uh, is just about Collaborate itself and again it's featuring Norwich who um, have uh, got Collaborate this year and they feel it's been a real um, a real benefit to them COVID, the COVID situation, like many institutions, made them think about more um, about where they invest and have bought Collaborate. Um, they ran some CPD sessions for the staff and everyone's just jumped on and run with it. But I'm sure that's the same with all your staff in your institutions. Um, and Chris said, despite launching Collaborate just over six months ago, it's already used throughout the college with very positive feedback. Chris, you may have met already because he's been to many of these BLC meetings. And here he is pictured on the left hand side of the screen. He is the system administrator there at Norwich 
Um, they're also using it for other, obviously for virtual classrooms, but they're using it for open days. Their staff are recording talking heads, introductions of themselves for course videos, for marketing purposes and for familiarization with the lecture uh, of the students on a new course. They're using it for team meetings, student disciplinary meetings and interviews for potential lecturers. So on that, I'm going to share that with our email addresses. So, and thank you. If you have any questions, then feel free to email us or pop them in the chat and uh, we will answer those. But otherwise, I will hand back to Amy at this point. Thank you very much, Gillian. That's thank great. Um, does anyone have any questions for Gillian? Just while she's um, on the line, because we do have a little bit of time. Feel free to pop it in the chat or jump on the mic. Do we? I, have I got the time room wrong? I thought we were, I was finishing at half past. No, you you were finishing at 22, so you, oh. Jillian, you're well away today. <laughs> That's not, I, I, I apologise. I, I thought it felt really rushed today. I do <laughs> apologise. I'm going to go back one and then <laughs> ask people if um, to use the annotation tools yeah, to sure. um, see how um, how that presentation was and get any feedback. I apologise everyone. I was like panicking thinking oh no I'm going to have to really rush through this. I wasn't showing you as much of course sites as I could have done but I'll just get some feedback and see if anybody's got any questions. I'm sorry Amy I've messed up your agenda. No not at all it's um, it, none of us usually keep the time so this is good. <laughs> Oh, that's a smiley face. That's good. <laughs> yeah, the Ally Transformer is really good. That's good. And and this tool that you're using here by writing on the screen is anonymous. So if you know you did. Uh, if you were thinking something more negative, feel free to write it. I do encourage constructive criticism, um, and uh, but I can't see who's written it, so that, <laughs> that should give you more confidence and be more honest if you wanted to. Yeah, that's uh, a good point uh, about some staff would like an option to make this this non-anonymous. What um, I know some clients have requested that already um, and the option of a toggle or whether it's anonymous or not anonymous, I know, has been put, put forward to the design team for the, they're working on a new annotation um tool at the moment and that option has been put forward already but you can always add weight to the number of requests blackboard we have a big community site um and we take product feedback and product enhancement requests there as well which you can fill in uh the form and that adds to the number of people who are requesting additional features like that i'm going to grab the link and share that. Product engagement, submit an idea. Right, I'll put the, the link in the chat for that product feedback. I know it's already logged, but the more people that, um, that request it, the more likely it is to happen because obviously the product development team have to prioritize the requests. But I think, um, if nobody has got anything else, then Amy, I'll hand back. I don't know whether you want a five minute break or, yeah. or you want to move to the next item. No, that's brilliant. Thank you ever so much, um, Gillian. That's really useful. And um, it's good to see the feedback. Um, and obviously, th there's quite a few colleagues here that are using um, different types of Blackboard um, product suite. So it's good to see. Um, so thank you ever so much. I think if we have a five minute um, comfort break now, does that sound good to everyone? Um, if we come back, uh, if we come back at quarter two, actually, 
um, and then we can start with ESAM and Peter's session um, to follow that. So if we all come back at quarter two, you don't need to log out, um, but just have a, a quick comfort break and then we shall reconvene very shortly. Thank you again, Gillian. That was a brilliant session. Um, and I'll see you in a moment. A pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. And David and Ian, I'll catch up with you soon. Um, but yeah, thank you, everybody, for the time and your feedback today. Much appreciated. Thanks again, Gillian. See you uh, next week. Morning, Peter and Isam. We're going to just have a quick break until quarter two. Is that OK with the both of you? Hi, Amy. I thought you were Hello. ignoring me then, Pete. Oh, no, I was just talking to Isam on the phone. I would never <laughs> ignore you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Isam just making a quick cup of coffee. Um, so, yeah, we'll all be uh, ready for um, 11.45. Super. Uh, Great. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Okay, cheers then.
Okay, then Peter and Isam, um, I don't want to eat into your time, so I'm going to um, hand over to you both um, and welcome to the Scottish Regional. Thank you for your time this morning to present. So over to you. Okay, Amy, well, thank you very much um, for inviting us to this. Um, so it's great to see um, Scottish colleagues um, here at this meeting. Um, so uh, what we're going to do today is I'm just going to start off for a couple of minutes telling you a little bit about Transform Education, but the majority of this um, presentation is going to be uh, my colleague Isam, um, who will be demonstrating how he uses Microsoft Teams uh, for online learning with his students at West City of Westminster College, and particularly some of the um, tips he has about improving uh, learner engagement. So, um, you know, for me it's terrific to be here at a, at a BL meeting. Uh, I know most of you on here, uh, you know how passionate I am about the BLC and how difficult it was for me really to hand over my baby to Amy, but I'm sure you'll all agree Amy is making a fabulous job of, of driving the, the BLC forwards. Um, so I didn't want to completely retire um, and so I was looking for a way to continue my role in further education and make use of all of the experience I've built up in in over 30 years plus the the network um, that I've built through the BLC. So with uh, Isan Babukan I've set up a company called Transform Education and our mission is very much around supporting um, further education colleges in particular, but also actors in transforming teaching and learning uh, through technology. Um, our key focus, not sole focus, is around using Microsoft tools and we are a Microsoft global training partner. Uh, we also are the UK um, partner for LMS 365, which is a, an excellent VLE that plugs into Microsoft 365. And if any of you are interested in finding out more about that, um, please do get in touch. So I'm guessing most of you probably don't know ESAM. ESAM is extremely famous in the digital learning community um, south of the border. Um, for the work that he does around uh, Microsoft 365 and using all the tools that come with that for supporting teaching and learning. I've known ESAM for more than five years through the, uh, the BLC network and you know the first time I saw him present I, saw, I um, really felt this is someone who has a lot to offer and uh, that's why I've uh, gone into business with ESAM. So I'm going to hand over to him now and he can start telling you a little bit about how he uh, works with his learners. Thank you very much for that very high praise as always Peter. Every time Peter introduces me I always go red like a tomato but obviously that praise really I could just return that praise on Peter. I have very high regards to for Peter for what he's done in the sector and of course for the Blended Learning Consortium. So good morning, it's still the morning and thank you for attending this session. Hopefully you'll get a lot out of it, I'm hoping. And this presentation is titled Tips for Blended Learning. And what's different about how I deliver my lessons this year is that 100% of them are all online. Basically, I do have a title called an e-learning manager, but I only do that one day in the week currently. So I do two and a half days of teaching and I teach on the BTEC level three. So I teach eight groups over those two and a half days and as I said this year I teach all my lessons 100% online. So the idea is how do we get our learners to engage and partake in online learning? So, you know, I teach 16 to 19 year olds. So how do I make sure that they don't just log in and they go and make a cup of tea and go and watch, you know, YouTube? How do we make sure that they are actually engaging on, you know, online? So I think it would be useful first to define this word engagement, right? Because it may mean different things for different people. 
like you know engagement is like having fun in learning and what we're talking about in the context of this presentation is engagement in terms of taking part in the activities participating getting involved all right so that's how we will you know define this term engagement right with that being said i will start with the register so believe it or not actually taking the register is really important and i take the re register like i would traditionally so i've got two monitors and basically i've got my register system on the other monitor and that right when the uh, the lesson starts i will go through the register register ritual and i will call all my students out by name and basically they'll have to write the word here in the chat pane yes teams does provide you to download the attendance list as a spreadsheet and tells you when they came in and when they left but i feel that taking the register right at the start calling names out and the students writing the word here actually is a really important part of the lesson and one of the most important parts because in my opinion it encourages uh punctuality and compared to my previous years my attendance and my, my punctuality this year is better than it's been and i'm not sure what the reasons are for that because when we first had our first lockdown attendance uh, and punctuality wasn't great but this year since september it's just it's just been it's been really really good so while i take the register the students because it's week nine now of learning know that they should do their starter activity which is in one note so now it's like cruise control i take the register and i say i still do so make sure you're on your starter activities which takes me now to one note the class notebook so the class notebook is my linchpin my kingpin one note or the class notebook is my main platform to supply remote learning delivery in conjunction in conjunction with of course microsoft teams because what it allows me to do it allows me as you can see here to structure manage organize deliver teaching and learning but it also helps me to capture engagement here all right so in terms of you know pedagogy you know and the learning science you know all the all the space practice and interleaving strategies this is what supports me to do that so in a starter activity i might ask them you know list three three things that you learned about about seo and that could have been done about three weeks ago right so the class notebook is fantastic and as i said it allows me to monitor engagement in real time and i can see if the students are participating or not and then i can go through their uh, starter activities and i'll show you what that looks like just by clicking on the class notebook so i'll use the review uh student option to review students work in real time all right this allows me to go through each of my learners starters one button without having to navigate through each of their notebooks and that's a real big time saver especially when you're trying to do this in real time okay so next collaboration tasks so here's my advice and this is what i try and do a lot what i try and do as much as possible is try and create activities where i can capture engagement and also record student names against that engagement so i use the collaborative space within OneNote, but obviously you can use the other collaborative sort of features of word and powerpoint and my only advice here is that if you are going to use that so just make sure you structure it properly for the learn what i mean by that is that every time i give them a collaborative 
task for the whole class, I'll make sure that I insert a table with rows and columns. So on the top, I'll put a heading called name and then comment. And then they'll put their names here and then they'll put their comment. And what's really good is they can all see each other's work in real time. And then I can identify any learners that are not engaging. So the tasks section is the main area where the students are engaging in terms of their tasks and what they need to complete. So I learned many years ago in order to reduce students asking me repeating, repeatedly, what do I need to do, sir? I create a checklist of tasks for them to complete during the lesson, right? And if I give out so over here, for example, you can see that was the starter discussion and we got that from the collaboration space where they did all of that collaboratively. Then asked them to copy and paste it into their own area. If I give out presentations in PowerPoint, then I will expect them to take active notes during my presentation, whether that's print screens or just write notes. So really, really important that they do that and they're not just passively, you know, uh, just observing or watching my presentation. I expect them to take notes when they do that. All right. So that's the task set under the OneNote and it's, you know, divided into week by week. So the students can go back to each week. So when they are given out the assignment, all of that learning is captured so they can now rely on their notes to complete the assignments. Okay, so Microsoft Forms and Teams, and that's a real big one for me. And one of the most powerful ways that I use Teams is in combination of uh, using Forms within Teams. And why do I do that? Obviously, we can use Forms as quizzes. Of course we can, formative assessment, check for learning. But what I use forms is, is to reduce my workload, right? And put the onus on the learners so they can take ownership of their own learning. And what do I mean by that? Have a look. So basically I will create a form and it's a assessment form and I would assign it as an assignment within Teams. So if you click on play, right? So basically this form is a, it's a survey, it's not a quiz, and it's asking them really simple questions. It's asking them, you know, have you, this was last two years ago, because we don't even use Moodle anymore. Our platform is exclusively Microsoft Teams. But here's an example. It's got differentiate, it's got something called branching in it. So if they click on yes, right, the second question comes up. And it says, have I completed P1, right? And if they click on no, then what happens is a calendar date input comes up. So depending on what they answer, it will provide them another sort of question. And what they are essentially doing is creating their own smart targets. So they're taking responsibility for their own learning and identifying tasks that they need to complete. And of course, this reduces my workload, which is really important. And so they complete this. And then the beauty of this is I can tell which of my learners need to do what. So. I can do it view by view, but it actually works much better when I click open in Excel. Let's see if I did open it in Excel in this example. I hope I did. No, but in Excel, when I open it in Excel, I get a much better sort of view of where my learners are. Okay, so that's Microsoft Forms in Teams. Stream. Stream is a cell in what I do. And if you don't know Stream, just in case, consider it like your YouTube corporate for platform. What's fantastic about this is that you upload all the videos because it's a video hosting platform and it generates the transcript automatically. So all my online lessons, I make sure 100% that they are all recorded. And I label them very clearly, lesson week 
one lesson week two lesson so anyone that is running late for my lesson or has missed the lesson they can easily catch up with this so stream is an integral part and at the start of you know the year i go and create a channel in microsoft stream add it as a tab in microsoft teams and all the videos here are labeled very very clearly and as i said it generates the transcript and you can take this even further and you can integrate microsoft forms on top of these videos so microsoft bookings was something that i discovered in the first lockdown in terms of using it to allow my students to book one-to-one -one meetings with me so i can give them feedback and what i love about this is that it integrates seamlessly within teams as a tab so my students will come here one-to-one -one feedback they'll choose the date and time and it will only provide dates and times where i'm available so you'll look through my outlook calendar once they complete them we both, as the teacher and the student, get an email with a link to that online meeting, just like here. When we join the meeting on that date and time, then the student will share their screen and everything gets recorded into stream. So basically, I'm giving them feedback, you know, by the students sharing their screen. Right, so we'll record this, we'll go through this. And normally the feedback is given within five minutes or less. And this recording then goes into their OneNote in a section called feedback. Because before COVID, I would deliver my 60 minute lessons and I wouldn't have that time within the lesson to give them that one-to-one -one quality feedback. And what I found is that it works so much better online by integrating bookings and teams and stream. So the next thing I would uh, advise, or if you haven't, it's a lovely feature that they introduced in PowerPoint and it's called PowerPoint Live. What I love about this is its accessibility. And what do I mean by that? So it's called PowerPoint Live and it's, so you can see how many of your students have joined. And if you look on the screen on the right, they can contribute or get engaged with your presentation by using emojis, all right? So if, and I try and train my students in that, if they understand the slide, they like it, obviously the thumbs up or the heart. But more importantly, if they're confused about the information, I encourage them to use the confused emoji. So I'm getting real time feedback with regards to that. And in terms of accessibility, you can see it generates the transcript here on the right. And what I love about this is that if I'm going too fast as a lecturer, then the students can scroll back through my transcript and see what I said. In addition, you'll see over here that the subtitles in, are in English, perhaps not in my context, but just to let you know that they can now translate this in, you know, up to, I think, 63 languages, by the way. So that's really good, especially if you're teaching perhaps ESOL students. And then after the presentation, the participants are then provided some type of form they can give feedback with regards to your presentation. And, you know, you can turn that off if you think that, you know, that's not required. OK, so, of course, we're all here because of the Blended Learning Consortium and something that I, you know, I am particularly excited about. And it's something that we've fought for for the last couple of years is basically uh, something called the Go One app, which they've integrated within Microsoft Teams, which allows us, believe it or not, now to have SCORM compliant courses within the Teams environment. So I teach Unit 3 called Social Media and Business, and there are some fantastic modules related to these subjects. One in particular is about plagiarism and referencing. 
and it's really important for my learners to know how to reference so what I've done is I've added a tab here and within that tab added so far two modules one about referencing and plagiarism the other one about marketing through social media and so my students are able to independently take these courses I've asked them what they thought and you can see from the feedback here they thought it was you know not boring and very good and informative and it just complements what I do because as teachers we're getting less and less contact time with our learners so if we can possibly comment our courses with these independent SCORM compliant courses you know even better right so then in pre you know I'm a big fan of the class notebook and I always used to have a lesson review section so at the end of the lesson my students would spend about 10-15 minutes reflecting on the lesson and some of the questions I used to ask are you know uh, what did you find interesting what did you learn what did you find interesting what did you find hard and any questions you would have liked to ask the most right these are the type of questions I used to ask and they used to type it up but now what I've done is I've turned those lesson reviews into a Flipgrid so now with Flipgrid they can record their screen so now I expect them to record their screen and do a lesson review in the last 10 minutes I'm not sure if you can hear this it's a lesson and they're really reflecting on what they've done as a screen recording I mean the type of skills these students are developing do you know is you know the more skills you can help them develop either the better all right and let's go next so we'll come towards the end of the presentation and all I could just advise everyone is that when you do teach online even you know offline you know try and capture engagement using the digital tools at your disposal and what do I mean by that for example you saw how I use the class the collaborative space within the class notebook because I need to capture if they're doing work or not you can easily use the assignments in teams assignments are not just merely for you know assignments you can use assignments in teams to capture engagement and you know I mix and match to make my lessons more interesting so I use quizzes or I might use Kahoot but when I do that I make sure that when my students use them they're not putting nicknames in there but they're putting their full names if they put nicknames in there I I I you know I I ask them to leave and then come back so they can put their real names so then I can capture the learning and of course Microsoft Forms all right so with everything you do don't forget about accessibility and if you know one of the biggest shortcuts that I use all the time is the Windows and plus and minus all right and that allows me to zoom in to any part of my screen if it's within the application just like teams you can even use control plus and minus if you've never explored the ease of access options in Windows 10 just press Windows U you can change the size of your cursor which might help and make everything bigger and don't forget just like what I'm using now subtitles and transcripts and PowerPoint live right all things that will help you create a more inclusive an accessible uh, learning experience and immersive reader and why do I mention the immersive reader for example if I go to a web page I won't read out the text and online I don't really get my students to read it out it just, it's just I just something that I don't do as much online as I would have done face to face so what I do is I get the immersive reader to read out the text for me why because it makes the experience more accessible and more inclusive because it will help the folks with dyslexia because I can change the background it highlights each word and the rest of it so immersive reader is a big part of when I go to web pages and we need to read out some text okay so finally some tips 
right? And this is probably the least technically challenging tip I can give to everyone, and it works for me. I'm not saying it works for everyone, but it works for me, and I use it a lot. I always ask my learners on a scale of one to ten, how much have you completed this task? So I'll always say, you know, on a scale of one to ten, let me know how far you are with your starter activities. And then I'll always get feedback, you know, nine, ten, seven. So I know where they are. And it's a it's a way also of engaging the learners. Those that don't type back, what I do is if you click on their profile pictures, you can initiate a one to one conversation in real time with them. Right. And if they don't reply on that, what I do is I'll include their tutor in a group chat. All right. So this is all done, by the way, in real time while I deliver my lessons. And how I do that is because I have two monitors. So just like I'm delivering this presentation, I've got my presentation notes on one and the other, which is what you're seeing now, is on my other monitor. So really, really important to use two monitors here. And here is change your status to do not disturb. Have you ever wondered how to stop those annoying pop-ups? For example, at the start of my session, I'll say, you know, I'll call out the register and they'll have to write the word here. And when they all write the word here, you'll get all of these notification pop-ups and it just drowns my chat pane and I can't see anything. Did you know that you can go to your status and say, do not disturb to stop all of that. That's like a pro tip, just in case you didn't know. And take into consideration technical issues and lag, right? And what do I, so online, face to face, right? Si you know, uh, online silence is a challenge, but you in real life, it creates a natural rhythm in a real life conversation. But when we're using these, um, you know, uh, video conferencing platforms, we become anxious about technology because silence makes us uncomfortable. And they carried out a study in 2014. And what they found is that silence using these video conferencing platforms shapes our views of people negatively right and they say that delays of 1.2 seconds makes people perceive the responder as less friendly or focused all right so that's something to keep in mind and if you do go on camera and i used to go on camera a lot not as much now after nine weeks of teaching online but please you know make sure that you know, if you've got a window that the lighting is good and eye level, you know, at the camera and the camel, camera angle is positioned correctly. How many times have you seen teachers with, you know, the uh, their faces looking down on the camera and, you know, your posture and the background where and, you know, good a good mic. So consider all of these things which should be sensible things. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they say, you know, we've heard, you know, this uh, that the camera puts 10 pounds of weight on us. But did you know, this is what they say, that it takes away about 20% of our energy online. So when we do teach online, be more energetic, more enthusiastic, more passionate, more animated. It would be appreciated by your students more. So if you've never heard of it, you've got some an app, a free app uh, developed by someone that works for Microsoft called Zoomit. Fantastic in that you can annotate your screen and you can put timers on there and you can do all sorts of things. All you need to do is just Google that Zoomit and download it. I use it all the time. So, and as I said, it allows you to uh, use timers. So if you've got activities, make sure that you use the timers for that. And then all I have to say is just less talk and more action, really. So something really interesting that hopefully will engage our learners more is uh, this is out, by the way. Uh, you can have real-time polls. So you can have a Microsoft poll in the lesson. So basically, you know, I used to ask, 
and I still will because I really like it, is, you know, from a scale of 1 to 10, how much you've completed. But now you can create polls doing that. And breakout rooms have been has been delayed and should be coming sometime in December. All right. And uh, thank you very much. And I hand you back to uh, Peter. Thank you very much, Isam. So, uh, Isam, could you just go back to the previous slide, mm -hmm. um, just briefly? Um, so, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how you might um, engage with Transform Education if, if you're interested in uh, bringing some of the magic that Isam is doing um, into your organisation. So, you can see we're already working with a, a number of colleges, universities, ACLs, um, in a number of different ways largely around the Microsoft platform and so if you feel you'd like your lecturers to be trained by ESAM at all we do this in a number of ways firstly ESAM will sometimes do like a, a one-hour inspirational presentation where he will show large groups of staff a range of different ways in which he uses Microsoft Teams with his students and that's a really good way of driving that forward in your college so teachers can see another teacher actually showing some really interesting and easy things to do. Um, we can also work with you in ESAM providing training with smaller groups focusing on particular tools within the Microsoft environment to look at in more depth at how they can bring those tools into their teaching and learning. Something that we're seeing a lot of is that most colleges are starting to use Teams more for teaching and learning and it's really took off during the whole lockdown things and we're seeing sort of two different approaches happening. Some colleges using Microsoft 365 alongside their existing VLE, Canvas and Moodle, etc. And we can work with you to support doing that. But increasingly, a number of colleges are starting to, like Eastham's College have, put the VLE away and just use the Microsoft platform as their learning platform. And the real benefits of this, this is something I was very sceptical about a couple of years ago when I heard colleges doing this, but the more that Teams has developed and the more functionality it's getting, I think this is very achievable now. And uh, we're working with one college now and developing a model to do this, to entirely migrate and we bring in an associates with MIS expertise, technical expertise. And again, if that's something that you're interested in doing, we can uh, support you with that. So um, I will now um, allow you to answer any, take, uh, ask any questions. And you can see at the bottom of that slide um, are our email addresses and our URL for Transform Education. So please do get in touch if you'd like to have a chat and find out anything more about how we might help you. So does anybody have any questions? Thanks ever so much, Peter and Esam. That was a, a fantastic session, and I always find it really um, inspiring to see, you know, some of the the different ways we can use the tools suggested. And I think it, like Peter said, it doesn't necessarily need to be that you use um, Teams or you know the Microsoft Suite, but there are some fundamentals and principles there that you can um, transfer into any VLE um, or delivery method. So it's really interesting. Um, we had one question a bit earlier, which I think has now been answered um, from Enna, Emma about um, can you assign times available or is it your whole calendar with the bookings? Um, but yeah. I think we've you can block. Yeah, you can you, you can definitely do that. So you can say I'm only available on this particular date from this particular time. Uh, just to let you know, you do need an A3 license or an A5 license to use Microsoft bookings. Right. Has anyone else got any questions? It, it can be any questions at all. It doesn't necessarily have to be for Peter or Esam, but any other questions or anything else you'd like to share while we're just on the call? Oh, Emma's got a question. We'd be wondering how Esam facilitates online proctoring for closed book assessment. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the kind of invigilation of um, yeah. online assessment if you do them you might not do them no, i don't but it's a really good question and it's a question that is being asked by the community especially you know in in these times 
So uh, mm. it's something I think uh, I think the I think this should be probably led in combat, obviously with the awarding bodies, because that's who's going to make the final decision with regards to that. It's a really good question, Emma, and it's it's been asked more and more. So I don't have Could an I answer. Could I here, yeah. Emma? Yeah. Um, I am. Uh, working with another organization that is offering um, online proctoring for exams and so if you want to send me an email if you'd like to find out more about that uh, please do so uh, yeah we have yeah Amy good good question there from David how do you keep consistency if people are using OneNote to keep all course material or activities uh, I mean Consistency, that's the whole point of the class notebook because as the teacher, when I create the class notebook, I have a structure that is consistent. So when my learners come, they'll know that the start of the lesson is the starter's activity. Then they go to their lesson plan. So I'm not sure if I understood your question correctly here. Oh, yes, David. So that's a really good question. And obviously, other teachers may feel that it makes more sense if they have a different type of structure but considering more or less this is how we observe our teachers in that they should start their lessons with a do now activity they should share their lesson objectives then they have the tasks and then at the end of the lesson there's a lesson review when I show teachers my structure, it makes sense for them and they more or less stick to it and might add a few additional sections that is tailor made for their subject. So we do give them the freedom to do, you know, to structure their class notebooks. But I now understand your question. Yeah. Great stuff. OK, could I just come in with a comment? On David's point about the structure that a VLA offers and uh, that is something that's very important uh, you can do that through class notebook to a degree um, and this is why we're working with LMS 365 which is a, it's a VLE that kind of sits within teams rather than the way that things like Moodle and Canvas integrate with teams where it's kind of a bolt on to it and if you're interested in, in a VLE that works within the team's environment again do contact us and we can let you know a Oops. Just got one more question there. Can you create templates in OneNote? Yes, you can, Emma, although the template facility in OneNote 2016 is more advanced than the OneNote in Windows 10. So initially they said they're going to stop support for OneNote 2016. There was an uproar in the community about that and now Microsoft have changed their mind. So they're going to now um, uh, update 2016 but if you if you're really concerned about templates you might want to be using 2016 to do that but there is templates in Windows 10 OneNote excellent and David's just added on to that you can set one default template pages per section and uh, when you're doing templates just a piece of advice just use tables to group things together it looks so much better when I first started using the class notebook about what was it now about five years ago basically my pages were very plain and now what I've learned is use tables to group things use background colors and in even background images just to make the uh, the class notebook look more visually appealing Thanks, Ethan. These kind of tips are, are really useful, aren't they, um, to implement straight away. Um, Joe's helpfully said that he's happy to share um, the Zoom guide to remote invigilation. So um, that would be really useful. Thanks for sharing that, Joe. Um, I don't know if you want to. Um, I, I know that Joe included his email address um, further up in the chat. So if you do want to to have that then I'm sure Joe wouldn't mind you dropping him a line. Do we have any other questions at all just before we wrap up for the, the day? I'm sure lots of people are eager to have some lunch. 
doesn't seem like it at the moment. Ah, oh, lovely. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Uh, so Joe will send that to me and I'll share it amongst the community. Thank you very much, Joe. That's kind of you. Well, I suppose then um, it's just up to me to say a huge thank you to all of our presenters um, at today's sessions. Um, it's been really useful. And again, um, it's really shown the power of the community with collaborating together and sharing best practice and I hope that we can continue to do this in the way that we do um, because it, it does mean a lot to have that support from the wider network. Um, thank you so much to all of our members for joining the call today and for your wider support as well. Um, we couldn't be a consortium without everybody pulling in together so um, thank you very much and um, Joe, yes, we'll be getting copies of the presentation, so we'll be posting the um, recordings on the BLC website and we'll be posting the presentations as well. And um, just thank you very much for all of your contributions. Have a lovely afternoon and in, I hope the rest of your term up to Christmas is um, fantastic. I'm sure you'll all be ready for that break when it comes. Thanks again, everyone, and take care of yourselves and stay safe. Thank you. And great to hear your moodles up and running, Joe. <laughs>